Today we're going to demonstrate how we prepare a hand mix of polyurethane foam. The process is used to prepare foam for properties testing. Before getting started, it is important to review the safety data sheets for the materials that you will be mixing. It is essential to wear the proper personal protective equipment, or PPE. This includes, but is not limited to, safety glasses with side shields, solvent resistant gloves, and appropriate clothing. The hand mix foam must be prepared in a hood with proper ventilation. Before the hand mix process can begin, you should inspect all equipment. Ensure that you have all supplies needed, that they are in proper working condition, and meet materials compatibility requirements. The polyol premix is prepared and then stored at a temperature which should be below the boiling point of the blowing agent. In this video, our polyol premix was stored at 50 degrees Fahrenheit, plus or minus 2 degrees, or 10 degrees Celsius. The isocyanate is kept at a room temperature of 70 degrees Fahrenheit, plus or minus 2 degrees Fahrenheit, or 21.1 degrees Celsius. A polyol thermometer will be used to ensure that the polyol premix is at the proper temperature prior to mixing. The agitator being used for this video is a Con ITT Dispersion Blade Type R for high shear and agitation. The agitator spins at 3000 revolutions per minute to ensure a thorough mixing of the components. The mixed foam will be poured into what is commonly referred to as a cake box to expand. The cake box is made of uncoated cardboard and its size depends on the testing to be done. The cake box is placed inside a custom made wooden frame to provide rigidity during polyurethane foam expansion. The wooden frame is equipped with a hinge that opens to ease removal. Tongue depressors will be used to test the reactivity properties of the hand mix foam. A timer will be used to ensure that pouring and mixing are performed for the correct duration. A polyol premix is prepared by weighing out the necessary components into a polyol blend vessel and mixing thoroughly after each chemical is added. The components are added in the following order. Polyol, surfactant, flame retardant if applicable, catalyst, and water. Be sure to account for any material that may adhere to the agitator during the mixing process. After blending is complete, the polyol blend is placed in the refrigerator and chilled to 50 degrees Fahrenheit or 10 degrees Celsius, or your preferred processing temperature. For this video, we will process at 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Once the polyol blend has reached 50 degrees Fahrenheit or your preferred processing temperature, it is removed from the refrigerator. The container is teared and the appropriate amount of blowing agent is added depending on your formulation. The polyol premix is then blended. The agitation is started slowly to eliminate splatter. After mixing is complete, the polyol blend is re-weighed. If the final weight is within 1% of the specified amount of blowing agent, the polyol blend is covered and returned to the refrigerator to bring the temperature back to 50 degrees Fahrenheit or your preferred processing temperature before the foam is made. If the weight is too low, additional blowing agent is added and the polyol blend is mixed again. If the weight is too high, the polyol blend is mixed longer to evaporate off some of the blowing agent and then re-weighed. Next, you can stage the equipment and materials in the hood for foam making. First, place the cake box with top removed into the cake box frame. Next, place the tongue depressors next to the cake box for reactivity testing. Stage the timer in the hood so it's ready when you prepare the isocyanate using the wet tear method. Prepare the appropriate amount of isocyanate needed for your formulation. This step is done immediately before making the foam because isocyanate can react with water in the air. The wet tear method of weighing isocyanate is done to ensure that the proper amount of isocyanate is added to the foam. This is done with the isocyanate at room temperature, which should be measured and recorded. Two disposable lab containers are labeled isocyanate 1 and isocyanate 2. The appropriate amount of isocyanate per your formulation is added to container 1, plus an additional 30 grams. This additional 30 grams is added to account for the isocyanate that remains in the container when it is poured out over the course of 3 seconds. Start the timer. Isocyanate is poured from container 1 to container 2 for 3 seconds using a timer to track the time. Stop the timer. Place container 1 on the scale and tear the scale to 0. Pour from container 2 into container 1 
until the amount specified by weight in your formulation is obtained. Repeat the 3 second pour from container 1 to container 2. If the amount poured from container 1 to container 2 on the repeated pour is the target amount plus or minus 1%, you have demonstrated that the correct amount can be poured. Refill container 1 to the specified amount for your formulation and proceed to the next step. Isocyanate container 1 is ready to be staged in the hood. Now you should reset the timer to the 40 second mark so it is ready for the foam making process. The temperature of the polyol premix is checked to ensure that it is at your required processing temperature, plus or minus 2 degrees Fahrenheit, as differences in temperature can affect the resulting foam. For this video, the temperature target is 50 degrees Fahrenheit, or 10 degrees Celsius. The polyol premix is then staged in the hood next to the isocyanate. Next, we will demonstrate the foam making process. First, start the agitator. When you're ready, start the timer. When it reaches 56, pour the isocyanate into the polyol vessel for 3 seconds. When the timer reaches 60, bring the polyol vessel up to the agitator and mix for 5 seconds. The isocyanate polyol combination is agitated for the length of time required to ensure a thorough mix. This time will depend on the reaction speed of the formulation and can typically range from 3 to 10 seconds. After 5 seconds, Stop the agitator and pour the mixture into the cake box container. Next, the reactivity of the foam mixture is tested. First, you can record what is known as the cream time. When the color of the foam mixture lightens from brown to a cream color, the time on the timer is recorded to indicate the cream time. Cream time will vary depending on the type of formulation and the catalysts used. In some fast reacting foam, the cream time may be instantaneous. Next, you can determine the gel time. Cut into the foam one inch with a clean tongue depressor and raise it right away. If there's a string of reacting foam that follows the stick, record the time on the timer as the gel time. If not, cut into the foam in a new location using a new clean tongue depressor for each cut until this is observed. The formation of strings of reacting foam indicates the gel time of the foam mixture. Next, you can test for the tack-free time for this test, the flat side of a clean tongue depressor is tapped lightly on top of the foam surface. The absence of foam sticking to the clean flat surface of the tongue depressor indicates the tack-free time of the foam. This concludes the reactivity testing. It is suggested that the foam be conditioned at room temperature for at least 12 hours before it is cut for physical property testing. If you have any questions about Honeywell blowing agents or this process, please contact your Honeywell representative. Thank you.